Hello Combat Sports Nation fans, welcome back for our Beyond the Mat series of 2016. I hope everybody's holidays and new year was, was filled with loved ones and family around them. Now this episode is brought to you by Matt Burgeon's Positivity Push. Uh, he's helping promote a healthier, happier lifestyle. Uh, you can learn more about Matt Burgeon at BeFitMA.com. Uh, we witnessed a, a, a war between Two great fighters at UFC 195 uh, between welterweight champion uh, Robbie Lawler and challenger Carlos Condit. Um, I will toot my own horn and say that, uh, or, or excuse me, remind people that I did predict that it would be a fight of the year candidate. And to say the least, round five was one of the best rounds ever fought in the history of MMA. While in the co-main event, Stipe Miocic finished Andre Olovsky in under one minute to now become the new number one contender to the heavyweight title. Michael McDonald looked great. Uh, he had one of the greatest arm, tri arm triangle escapes, uh, taking the back and finishing with the rear naked choke. Um, again, ever witnessed. I mean, it was smooth. If you didn't get the opportunity to see it, I'm sure you could find it online. We have two separate segments today. The first is with 5-0 Rico DeShulo, uh, a Sitting Tong fighter who's facing 8-8 Chino Duran this Friday at CES MMA 32 at the Twin River Casino. Our second segment is with Brendan Lockdown Battles, uh, amateur heavyweight, 1-0, 1-0, 1-0. Uh, he's, he's also a Sitting Tong fighter who has... A fight at New England Fights 21, February 6th in Bangor, Maine. Um, so let's get to it. I'm here with Rico DeShulo um, at Si Ying Tong, Boston. Uh, packed house tonight. You know, ran into him, was able to catch him right before he left. He's, he's recently, um, or excuse me, coming up he has a fight at CES uh, January 8th. Uh, against uh, Chino Duran. Rico, thanks for having some time with me. You're fighting a guy coming up from um, Princeton, Florida. Coming, You know, you're from Peabody, you're, you're, right? Peabody, yeah, Mass. Yeah. And, and you're fighting in, in um, basically in your backyard at the Twin River Casino. And you got the guy coming, you know, Chino Duran, 8-8, eight and eight, coming up from Princeton, Florida. Um, how do you feel about somebody coming into your hometown? You know, it's... Uh... I don't, I don't really think of it one way or the other. If anything, I actually, I traveled when I was an amateur uh, a little bit, and I actually loved it. I used to, I loved getting booed and shit and being the guy that was, like, hated and whatnot. I, I'd love to just, like, you know, kind of shove in people's face and be that guy, you know what I mean? But uh, I've had enough, enough fights now where, you know, I'm not really concerned about that. I'm going to have tunnel vision when I walk out there and just try to do the damn thing and get the finish one way or the other, and if not, get the win. You know, that's, that's, that's number one concern, you know, so whatever happens... Get the win, and, and you've done you've done exactly that. You're perfect now at five and zero as a pro. Two KOs, three decisions. Your last fight, you, you know, the guy had hurt his shoulder, or you had hurt his shoulder. Uh, some people say that you know, if a guy gets hurt um, due to injury, then you didn't didn't necessarily win. You were in there with him. He got hurt. You you injured him. That's yeah, the way I look at it. Especially when um, you know that that whole injury was pretty much based on that on that takedown you know what i mean it was a really really clean takedown and transition he posted it and, and i think that's what really hurt it after i was already kicking that arm to begin with you know what i mean so it, i saw him kind of actually make like a like a move like i thought it, it, hit, it hurt his body but i actually kicked his arm and i, I saw him kind of get hurt a little bit but i was thinking he's just you know maybe knocked the wind out of him a little mm -hmm. bit and then i switched stances and kind of swept him and it was really clean takedown like i felt him kind of like you know and you know the, mm -hmm. the air kind of got out of him and then I was, uh, you know, threw down some elbows and whatnot, and I was, you know, turning them over, and just, yeah, he just, I don't know if it was, you know, a combination of everything, but, I mean, whatever, <laughs> got the W, I, I, I felt great, you know, once I got on the ground with him, I felt like I would have dominated him no matter what, because he didn't really feel like, you know, I, I had a really good camp, I, I, didn't, I didn't, I didn't see that fight going the distance anyway, mm -hmm. I felt like I was just getting my timing, and, and he was going to run into something anyway, so, whatever. Got the win. <laughs> now, <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, you're facing a guy now with, with um, literally more than three times the amount of in cage experience as a pro than you. You know, with with Chino, um, uh, I believe he stands at four KOs, two subs, two decisions in his eight wins. 
Um, what do you feel as if, you know, some guys say they don't care about the other, their opponent's game plan or what they have to offer, but what do you know about Chino that might pose, um, a challenge or is there anything you're preparing specifically for him? Um, well, I usually go through all my training camps. Um, you know, I watch a little bit of video, obviously, definitely, um, you know, see what kind of fighter they are. And from there, you know, I, I don't like to over overanalyze. Really, I just you know go off some basic things. You know, is he a salt par? Is he orthodox? Does he like to shoot a double, single? Or is he like what is he, you know just some basic things that you know I, I uh, you know can can you know work on in the gym. But for the most part, I'm just working and focusing on getting better every day at everything I can and being able to adapt in the fight. That's the biggest thing for me is like being calm, composed smart and being able to adapt because 90 percent of the time shit ain't gonna go your way you know what i mean all the time with every situation so you have to be able to switch it up and find a way to win or find a way to impose your will and just just be better than the person you know what i mean just if you know you're usually a really good striker your striking isn't working you got to be able to wrestle or, or go to the ground and do some just you know whatever whatever it takes and that's that's what it comes down to now you you fought you know for CES and, and uh, huge regional promotion. You fought um, for Bellator. Now, what do you see in your future? Well, I'm definitely staying at bantamweight. Even though like a couple fights here and there, you know, either catch weights or a little bit heavier. They say whatever. That's just more or less because some guys have dropped out and we agree on weight. And I don't really, you know, I'm down for whatever really as long as you know uh, I'm healthy and and my training camp's going well. You know, but for the most part, I'm not. I don't. I don't plan on you know. St- fighting a lot at 45 i'm a bantamweight mm-hmm. you know, i am a 135 or that's my that's where i should be and that's where i feel the best you know so i'm um, just gonna keep on one you know doing the damn thing one fight at a time and just trying to take people out and climb the ladder you know what i mean i don't really pay attention to you know all the other bullshit you know what i mean it's i'm here every day i'm, I'm training hard every day you know i'm just getting better and you know, it's all I can do. That's all I have control of. You know what I mean? So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna train my ass off. I'm gonna fight real hard and and you know see what happens. <laughs> you know. And you know, at, at bantamweight, the the two at the pinnacle of of the division uh, of the of the rankings. Um, you know, the UFC coming up with T.J. Dillashaw and and um, Dominic Cruz. Well, how do you see? You know, how do you see that? bantamweight clash you know working out or playing out that particular fight or just the weight class in general because my boy rob font's gonna take that shit like a storm <laughs> man one, one fight at a time like he's, a, he's a beast right now and he's training full time has been since his, you know right before his last uh big big win last year in uh july so uh, i mean yeah man if, you know i'm not there yet you know if i do get there i plan on fucking making making a statement too you know it's just um a matter of time i still gotta I feel like I have a lot to learn. You have a lot to, to you know, I'm, I'm not saying like, you know, right now, I'm ready right now. Mm-hmm. Maybe I am, but you know what? I'm just going to keep on improving. You know what I mean? That's that's what it comes down to. And and for the most part, you know, it's it's just, it's all about putting that time in, you know, that time in the gym, putting in the hours, you know, really focusing on like, because a lot of times you can go in the gym and, and grind away, but like right now I'm starting to get to a point where I've done that for so long. It's, you know, I almost plateaued for a little bit. So now I'm like really starting to, I got to start drilling technique and really, really tone, like honing in on certain things and, and finding what I do that stands out that I can, you know, kind of set apart, you know what I mean? And really be different, but not force it. You know what I mean? Like just be me and make the, you know, the best things that I can do really stand out and, 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 and just, you know, showcase that the best, you know, and, and, you know, in order to win fights, you know what I mean? That's really what it comes down to and, no matter what, I feel like I, I, I can't really be in a boring fight. It's not my style. Yeah. You know what I mean? Unless some guy just really just like, we just hug out the whole time because he's <laughs> just trying to hold me against a gate or something. You know what I mean? But for the most part, if the dude's there to fight, dude, we're going to fight. And it's going to be really fucking exciting because, you know, I, and it's, it's not me forcing. It's just like a lot of people, you know, it's just it's how I fight. You know what I mean? I'm trying to, I, I have diverse striking. You know what I mean? I, I really go, you know, I'm, I'm a little risky. You know, yeah. I'll take risks that people won't. You know what I mean? I'll do that. You know what I mean? To to get the big finish or even just to set something else up. You know what I mean? So I'm willing to take those risks to, you know, put on a show and not just put on a show, like, to win the fight. You know, yeah. and I think people, a lot of people do do it almost the opposite. They try to, they try to do that type of stuff. Yeah. You know what I mean? Where I feel like I have to do the opposite. I have to, like, <laughs> go back to being, like, a little more controlled, a little more disciplined because that that type of stuff is going to come out naturally, yeah. you know? And that's a big thing that 
crew marketer with Rowdy has always worked with me is he never really tried to, you know, um, you know, force me into a certain style or something. He always knew how to mold my style to make it better, which is a huge, you know, it, it's just a, a great way to learn how to, you know, just get better and, yeah. and naturally, you know, yeah. without forcing anything. It doesn't, you know, it, it makes, I don't know, just makes it fun too. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I don't have to, you know, drill some stupid thing over and over that I hate doing that I'm probably not going to do in the fight <laughs> because it's, it's, you know, realistically, people aren't going to, you're not going to do something you're not comfortable with. Right. You know what I mean? So we work on, on, on things that we are comfortable with, just making them better, tightening them up. So that's a big thing. Well, the, every time I've seen you fight, um, the crowd cheering your name gets bigger and bigger, you know, I, and I'm sure it's going to be the same at, at CES um, coming up January 8th. You have a long, long fight life ahead of you. I'm sure you believe that with a lot of potential in front of you, and uh, we're excited to see you. You want to send a shout out to your fans, family, teammates, anybody who supports you? Yeah, absolutely. All, first off, my family, my girlfriend, who, you know, deals with all the bullshit in between <laughs> that comes with, you know, dating a fighter, you know, between like cooking me meals and helping with my, my family and everything and all that. So shout out to that, my, to Claudia. And, uh, you know, my family, my friends, but my sponsors, um, Green Harvest, Hydroponics, um, Rev Gear, those guys, you know, um, Kevin Tall Steel. I've had, I, you know, I, I got a really, really, really like, you know, close group of guys that support me. That's, you know, it's huge. All my other sponsors and uh, Mike Perry from SOS, my strength and condition, conditioning coach, who's really helped me, you know, get stronger and, and, and you know, help me my, with my body, you know, recovery and things like that that I never really focused on, you know, which is huge. You know what I mean? I'm here. I'm able to train so much because, you know, everybody knows this sport isn't exactly like forgiving on your body. You it know? is you not. Have, you have to do the right things to be able to recover to train a lot. You know what I mean? So he's you know, brought some awareness, you know, uh, in, in my, uh, you know, training. So shout out to Mike Perry and Sit Your Tongue and uh, the guys over at uh, Cape Cod, Fighting Alliance, Juliana Capino, you know, our whole, our whole affiliates and yep. all that stuff. And thanks for having me. That's, that's that. Cool, man. Rico, I appreciate it. Thanks Thank you so much. much. Look to see you. I'm here with Brennan Lockdown Battles. Um, right on the heels of his coming up bout at NEF 21. Uh, it's going to be New England Fights 21, the Immortals, on Saturday, February 6th. Uh, Brendan, what's going on, buddy? How are you? Good, how are you doing, brother? Good, good, good. So, um, we ran into each other when, when I had stopped down at Siying Tong. I, I was on my way out. I know you were just finishing up training. Uh, so I'm glad that you met back up with me. Um, you're, you're, you're taking on... A David Smith coming up, who's two and zero. Yourself's one and zero. Uh, you guys have a similar background as far as you're both wrestlers, and um, you're both having hard times, you know, hard times getting fights because of your wrestling background. Um, so, so tell me a little bit about tell me a little bit about that. I don't know. It took me twelve for him, but I get uh, I haven't had one fight in what last year. Also, had like four guys back out. So I can understand the frustration with that. And he agreed to fight. There we are now. Now, just so people could get a little familiar with you who might not be familiar, you know, and, and just to make sure my information, you're you're from East Ham, Mass. Yeah. And, and you went to uh, uh, Nosset Regional High School where you were a, a standout wrestler and a uh, football player there right i think you played uh yep, defensive yep, yep. defensive lineman and quarter but you played a big guy like you played quarterback your senior year is that right uh yeah it's just a, it's a single wing offense so it's complicated but i was really a blocking back i was just calling the quarterback because i caught the plays uh you're, you're the leader on the field you're a leader on the field oh, yeah. and, and um got some accomplishments here uh, on on the field and on the mat boston globe and boston herald all-star um, all scholastic pick in wrestling, you, you do, you know, Brennan had captured the division one and all stake titles as a junior at 215. Uh, you're fighting, you're fighting MMA now at heavyweight. Uh, what was the highest you, you, you fought in high school wrestling? Was it 285, 285? Yeah, I went up to 285 in my senior year. Now, was that the weight you were walking around at or was that just the division no, match? No, 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 that was just the division. I weighed about 232 back then. So what what was the what you know I'm not familiar with with high school wrestling weight classes but what's the range there I mean 
MMA, the range is 206 to 265 in heavyweight. In high school, uh, what was it? High school, it? It, was, it was 215 to 285. And then my senior year, it bounced up to 220 to 285. Um, I was having problems. I started my cut. And my senior year, and I realized it was just, you know, it wasn't attainable, and it wasn't the smart thing to do. Granted, I had my uh, four at the UConn at the time. I didn't need to cut weight, but I needed to keep weight on. So I went up to heavyweight, and it actually was a, a greater, it was a good uh, decision at the end of the day, because in New England, we had five All-Americans in the heavyweight class. So it was actually a really good uh tournament for the heavyweights that year where 220 it wasn't so much um so brought about some good competition and good all-around move you were a little bit of a leg rider when you're when you're a wrestler huh oh yeah oh yeah do, do you feel as if that technique uh, um transitions well to to grappling and jiu-jitsu because that's a position i've used you know eddie bravo every eddie bravo he was able to convert that position into a very successful transition position uh, transition uh position uh to a lot of a, a lot of attacks do you feel as if does that help you knowing that that position from wrestling uh i don't know if it it helps me all. It's one of it's not my go to move, but I can definitely feel comfortable in it. You know, especially for my leg riding it at, when I was in high school for wrestling. But it's uh, the more and more I try to develop my my jujitsu game, the more I try to stay away from it as much as I can because I already feel comfortable there. Why, you know, I try to explore more in the. Uh, jiu-jitsu world and feel more comfortable in certain different techniques. Dave also, I mean, he he's from the area. Um, and he was, he was a heavyweight wrestler. Had you, are you familiar with his, his accomplishments? Um, uh, I think he won state. I'm not sure. Um, I'm not really too concerned, uh, with his wrestling compared to mine. I mean, he's, he's on a state level. I was on a national level. There's, there's a big difference. Yeah. I'm, I'm looking he, at it now. From Maine, Maine compared to Massachusetts. <laughs> Should be told, you know. You can go ahead and read the press release for all the fans up at uh, New England Fights dot uh, com. Uh, I'll actually put it in the the link to the story uh, w- with the podcast. But I, I'm reading here. It says uh, he's a member of Berserkers MMA uh, in Rummerford, Maine, two time state champion wrestling in Mountain Valley High School. But I don't really know how old this guy is. Um, I think he's 27. I read in the. Uh... On the promo from NEF. Yeah, I, I, I and I mean that that's pretty young, twenty seven. But you're 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 several years younger than that, right? Oh yeah. Um, twenty twenty one, twenty two. Twenty one. You know, I interviewed you after your first fight, and and you said that was a long, hard road to get that first fight, and it was very impressive. Um, you know, where to, where's your training as of right now? Um, and do you have an off season? Because uh, you said you you've had many fights fall you know fall um, fall short of actually making it to fight day. Uh, have you actually taken any breaks off? Uh, no, no, I haven't taken any breaks. I've just been just staying at the grind and just trying to improve myself as much as I can. You know, day by day. You know, if the fight's gonna happen, I I got to the point where I got discouraged because fights weren't happening, and then I realized. You know, the hardest person I want to fight is really myself, you know, so I try to uh, put in perspective why I just need to work on myself every day, and if a fight happens tomorrow, I'm ready, if a fight happens in a week, I can do it, and so I just stay ready and focus on making myself a better fighter every day. And you said you said you got some strength and conditioning in today. What, what? Yeah, I do, my, uh, I do my strength and conditioning with uh, Corey Clark down at Body Strong in Orleans and Chatham. So not to give away too much of your secret, but what is your what's your plan? Are you are you are you hoping to test your wrestling against his? Or uh, I know with you know some of the striking strikers and your striking coaches that you work with, I'm sure your hands are are, are getting better every every day, every single day. Uh, um, to be honest, I'm just going in there and fight. You know, if it ends up on the ground, it ends up on the ground, and let it be known I'll be on top. You're not taking me down. So I'm not really, you know, I don't mean to sound arrogant with that being said, but I don't see this guy taking me down. And 
don't know. We'll see. We'll see. You might see a little bit more hands or it depends on where it goes, you know. It's a, it's a fight. You never know where it's going to end up, you know. Where are you? Where are you as of right now, as far as weight? Um, I'm always under. I'm not too light. Uh, I'm actually heavier now than I was in my August fight. I'm about two, oh, two fifty five, two sixty. When my last fight, I weighed in at like two thirty nine, two forty. Now I know, you know, I know a lot of. Uh, local Lobo and and a lot of your teammates and your coach oh, yeah. and your coaches and stuff and I know they preach I know they preach um you know the full mar the the full martial arts life and uh, a full healthy life which obviously it only makes sense what what is what is the heavyweight diet I mean are are you um do obviously you eat clean but I mean. Is there much maintaining as far as having to watch what you eat and and uh, how does that break down being in Junico with all that with all that that health those health nuts Peter Barrett and Max Barrett and all those guys around you yeah. how how does that affect your diet having to to deal with those guys? Um, I don't. I eat clean, but at the end of the day, I'm a, I'm a heavyweight. I'm two, you know, I'm two fifty, two sixty in a given day. Um, I don't have to worry about my weight, but it's like my teammates do. Like if they cut cut weight and be on weight, you know, I'm always pretty much underweight. Um, I eat clean, but at the same time, I also know my body. You know, if I eat completely clean, I'm gonna lose a bunch of weight, and I'm gonna be fighting at two thirty five, two forty. So I got so much metabolism now, whether or not that be. Uh, like if I want to go eat a candy bar, I'll probably go eat a candy bar. <laughs> Like, it's, it's nice being a heavyweight, and my, some of my teammates definitely hate me, I know. I've done my, uh, I've done my past two training camps with Sean, I remember asking if I could go to McDonald's while he was cutting, and he was pretty pissed off, rightfully so. Um, but yeah, I don't, I, I eat clean for the most part, but I also understand that if I eat completely clean, I will lose the weight I need. Yeah, heavyweight, you have a little bit more flexibility with weight loss, right? Uh, yeah. Uh, now, somebody who's wrestled as long as you've wrestled, you know, with, with the success in wrestling that you've had, um, and seeing other wrestlers, I'm sure, cut in weight, how, how are your feelings about, you know, with the changes coming up or the changes already in pro process um, with, uh, the restrictions on IVs and and the troubles of 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 guys who are trying to cut weight. I mean, there's so much that encompasses that, Brendan. I, I mean, that their team is involved, their coaches are involved. They've got people around those fighters that that fall ill or get sick or have to pull out. They have a, a support system around them that that should be there guiding them, and it just frustrates me. And you, you tell me how you feel, but it just frustrates me knowing that these guys put themselves at risk, but it's not just them putting themselves at risk. It's their coaches and their training partners because they're just allowing that, oh, it's only 12. It's only 13. It's only 15 pounds. Oh, we could do that in 24 hours. And, I mean, how, how do you feel about that? Um, I know back in high school, Massachusetts Wrestling Association, or I forget, whatever they call themselves, they made you go through a physical process. And they would tell you right before the season even started, what weight class you were, could be your lowest. So they're taking your fat percentage and your weight, and letting you know what you can healthily get down to. And I never saw any problems with that, because that's a doctor looks at how much body fat you got on you and what you can really get down and they're, put their factor in water weight and stuff like that. And so it was fair. You know, if a, if a kid who weighed, uh, who would be in a 189 weight class, but was only 185, and he was a little fat to him, he could cut down to 171. That's fair. But to some of these kids, you know, you know guys, these fighters cutting 20, 30 pounds, you know, I mean, it seems nuts to me. Uh, I'm glad I'm not in that position, and I don't have that much experience over the past couple of years doing it. Uh, last time I cut weight, I was a sophomore in high school, a junior in high school. Uh, I know myself, when I stopped cutting weight, 
I felt ten times better because I wasn't depleting my body the nutrients I needed. So it's kind of a, a risk and, uh, you know, like, uh, checks and balances, if you will. You got to make sure, you know, if you're losing all this weight, he's like, are you hindering your performance or are you helping yourself? Yeah, maybe losing 5, 10 pounds, 15 pounds is good. And your body can do that through water weight, depending on how big you are. But if you're going to cut 20, 30 pounds, that's not healthy. But that's just my my uh, thoughts of cutting weight, you know. there's when The way we did it in mass, was, I felt it was very fair. You get doctors involved, you get a formula uh, created, and it's all across the board, it's all fair. It, it, it just makes me laugh because, like you said, to sacrifice for that extra five or that six pounds or seven pounds after you've already cut 12 or 13 pounds to have the bigger guy advantage. Oh, well, he's going to be the bigger guy. A lot of a lot of people, a lot of fans forget that in the UFC, when it first began, there really wasn't, there wasn't the weight classes. It, was, it wasn't, well... I don't know if I'm going to take the fight because he missed weight by three pounds, you know? So, so yeah. I, I believe, I, I agree with you, you know, sometimes to, to sacrifice those extra couple of pounds to be the bigger guy it is really you're sacrificing health and you're sacrificing performance. And, um, yeah, like you said, you have that luxury to where you don't have to make that sacrifice. Um, you know, overall, how, how do you feel about your bout coming up? Um, and, and if you were to make a prediction, uh, what would your prediction be against Dave Smith? Um, right now I feel good. I feel great. Every day I'm, you know, every week it seems like I'm making jumps as far as, you know, being a, um, more well-rounded fighter. And that's awesome. It's nice to see that in some weeks, I, they don't have to say well so, but, uh, I feel real good. I feel, you know, conditioned, ready. And, uh. As far as predictions for the fight, I just think I'm just going to dominate this fight. It's not going to be a very long one. And uh, as he said, we'll see who's the best after this fight's done. And I'm sure it'll still be me. <laughs> uh, Brendan Lockdown Battles is on the phone now. He's fighting Dave Smith uh, February 6, 2016 for New England Fights 21, The Immortals. Um, very exciting. You know, I, I understand it's been tough for you to get fights. Um, and hopefully that doesn't rush your career to, to get you to go pro because I know there's some solid, solid heavyweights in this area. Um, how do you feel so far about that as far as uh, your future with MMA? Because I know you said you sacrificed um, you sacrificed a full ride to UConn uh, for football to be able to make mixed martial arts your dream, do you feel rushed uh, at all, considering that you've had this much challenge as an amateur uh, to get yeah. fights? Tough question, you know. Uh, it's... Uh, or maybe, like, when someone says, hey, you're going to go do, do a pro fight, you're like, oh, already? But at the same time, you're like, oh, hell yeah, maybe I'll get some fights now, because... Amateurs are back out left and right. You know, it's a, it's been a process. It's been, as I said before, and it's been very discouraging. Um, but I kind of, like I said before as well, you know, I've just been just really focusing on myself and making myself a better fighter, a well-rounded fighter um, every day. And when it comes time to go pro, whether that be in a, in a month from now after I'm done with Dave Smith or, or you know, a year from now. My coaches will know, and I'll have faith and trust in them, and we'll just take it from there. What's your ultimate vision? What's your ultimate goal? What's my ultimate goal? What's the end game? You... I definitely want to be a, a world champ, one of the best fighters in, you know, in the world, for sure. You know, got, that's the end game. And hopefully it ain't too far away. You know, based upon your your first performance that I was there, um, and knowing the little bit that I know of Dave Smith, it's going to be an incredible fight. And, uh, I look forward to it. Uh, is there any sponsors or anybody else that you'd want to send a shout out to? Just a shout out to, you know, my teammates, their coaches, and, uh, anyone that's coming up to me to support me. 
Thank you, guys. Well, listen, man, I appreciate your time. It's always a big deal to talk with you guys from Sit Ying Tong and, and Gracie Fitness and, and Junico. And uh, you have a huge support system around you. I appreciate you spending time with Combat Sports Nation. Thank you, brother. I appreciate it. Combat Sports Nation, stay tuned. You can follow us on Twitter. It's CMBT SPRTS Nation. Uh, on Instagram, it's just Combat Sports Nation. Uh, follow us, like, and follow us on Facebook. We want to hear from you guys. We appreciate your time. Thank you so much.